Hello, welcome to R N S Health Hub again. Our second video is about artificial meat. Hello, this is Rosie, and today our video will talk about artificial meat. And in this session, you will know how it develops and why it becomes such a hot topic in the field, and also、um, what opinion we should hold against this product. In 2013. An experiment conducted by a Dutch scientist, Mark Post, became a landmark in the field of cellular and bioengineering. Although the techniques had been invented many years before, the general public was still captivated. In 2013, Mark Post became the first person to cultivate lab-grown meat, which led people to explore its immense potential benefits and opportunities. Since 2014. Business invested hugely in that industry. Meat even announces that they will bring a lab-grown product to the market in 2021. Consequently, a grave concern was raised: How would lab-grown meat become profitable? To understand the importance of lab-grown meat, we should realize the circumstances humans face nowadays. According to the database. Around 52 billion pounds of meat is consumed in the U.S. every year. The production of one pound of hamburger uses up a huge amount of resources, including 232 square meters of farmland, and around the world, 25% of the greenhouse gases produced are due to the meat industry. It's hoped that lab-grown meat can address these environmental concerns. The process of growing cultured meat through bioengineering techniques is complex. Biologists first extract stem cells from muscle cells in animals' bodies, which can infinitely divide and differentiate in a controlled environment. By combining the single layer of muscular tissue with other layers, muscular fibers form. With seasoning to imitate the flavor of natural meat, the muscle fibers are converted into meat pies, such as hamburgers, by the end of the process. This process requires no feed and only use 43.6 gallons of water, saving up to 45% of energy and resources. Not only is lab-grown meat helpful in addressing environmental issues, but such a product eliminates ethical concerns as well. The production of lab-grown meat does not involve the traditional killing of animals. Ten stem cells have the capacity of producing 50,000 tons of meat within two months. Since the extraction of stem cells takes place in live animals, the cost of breeding decreases. Plus, animals then have the chance to live out their full lifespans. To a certain extent, this new way of production follows the present trend of ensuring animals' rights and welfare. Though there are still some limitations that impede the chances of bringing lab-grown meat into the market, the main factor is the cost. It reaches around six times the price point to prime of pork. The required environment, proper temperature, the specific conditions, and specific air pressure all contribute to the expensive cost of lab-grown meat. What's more. The public's acceptance of the synthetic product is also a big challenge. In the United States, almost 60% of customers hold negative opinions toward lab-grown meat. They suspect that the lab-grown meat may cause potential health issues. This potential risk is slowing down the development of lab-grown meat, reducing the cost, exploring the potential health problems. The design restricts restricts policies for productions are the prerequisites for the commercialization of lab-grown meat. The road to success is still a long one for experts looking to expand this field. Now let's look at an interview about the interviewer's opinions towards artificial meat. You are the film director of Meet the Future, which has been released this year, 2020. What was the most、uh, 
exciting thing happened during the, the shooting? What um, surprised you the most? I think what surprised me the most is how is the acceleration of it. Because when we started filming in 2016, uh, they had just literally moved into their first research facility. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was this teeny tiny team of, of people. You know, I think there were five people at the time that were, you know, really committed and passionate. But of course, they were taking huge risks. And Uma Valetti, the mm -hmm. CEO and co-founder of Memphis Meets. Yes. The film is really centered around him because then that gives the film a really human anchor point. And he's a really interesting person. The film, in a way, charts his rise in prominence as a pioneer, as a CEO. Because uh, to answer your question, I think the most surprising thing that happened is that, you know, a year later after filming, suddenly... Richard Branson, Bill Gates, and two of the largest meat companies in the world, Cargill and Tyson, mm -hmm. are investing in his company. And that sent a message to the world mm -hmm. that this is not just a big idea, but it's a big idea whose time has come. And that it's also not so much of a concept that is utopian or in the, in mm -hmm. the far off it's not science fiction it's actually mm -hmm. happening it's happening now and it really could be in supermarkets and restaurants within the next few years at the end of the video if you have any concerns or opinions about this you can feel free to add your points in the comment box thanks for watching looking forward for your comments <laughs>